Hello and welcome to today's video. We're going to go over um, several mid laners currently starting in the uh, LOL Esports space. Their age that they de debuted as a um, majority starter in mid lane for their team. How many games it took for them to get there in the respective academy systems, etc. in their regions. And uh, who they were replacing, how was the team at the time they did. Uh, basic win rate uh, stats. Um, because, you know, we see this time and time again, players are propped up and compared to those they replace, and sometimes that sets them up for failure. And there's also instances where a player is going to join a shit team and not have a chance in hell. Um, and many of the players on here, I believe I counted nine of the um, world's participants last year, are on this board. They debuted as a majority starter at 18 or younger. So, um, in the case of Knight, he had the most games played prior to being a full-time starter. He had 125 games in um, the, equip I think it was the LSPL at the time. And at 18 years old, would re uh, debut for Sooning in spring, replacing Fen Fen. And he joined a team that had a 42% win rate. One could argue that wasn't a very great start. And he only got it to about a 52% win rate before he was replaced by Angel, who's also on the board. And at 18 years old, Angel had 53 games played and improved it to a 56% win rate. Um, so, you know, this notion that, oh, well, you know, that team kind of sucks and that player's going into it. I mean, they're not, like, it's not as simple as what I just said about, you know, a player's going into a good situation. They're bound to do well. A player's going into a bad situation. They're bound to do terribly from here on out. Loser's mentality, winner's mentality. Because in the end, the teammates do play a role. Can the teammates bring you up along for the ride? Can they help, well, help, clearly, but allow you to improve at your own pace and make up for your shortfalls? Um, so, Care, FPX, played 109 games before being a full-time starter in 2022, replacing B. And went from a 67% win rate to a 51% win rate on a team that really took a nosedive. Um, clear as day that FPX are not what they once were. Um, you know, they're okay right now with Milky Way. But that's another great example. I am not going to put Milky Way in my top five junglers in the world. Some people thought that was preposterous that I didn't do that. Players need to play longer than a split before you start giving them a crown or, you know, digging their grave. Vathio uh, joined Misfits in 2021 with 102 games played already and would replace Fabavan, who would be replaced also by Caps earlier in his career. And Misfits went from 47% win rate to 56 with Vathio. Showmaker in 2018, 2019 had 88 games played and at 18 years old with uh, D, um, what was it, Dom Juan Gaming at the time, would obviously go on a great run in 2019. Um, Bulldog, KDF, replaces Fate last year, had 85 games prior to replacing Fate, and the win rate stayed relatively the same, 38 to 33%. This year may be slightly better. We expected more out of him and the team. Uh, Bulldog has played well, though. Honestly, when you look at this board, the majority, I mean, like 80% of these players, you could say, have had good careers or are going to have good careers, right? We've seen them play for a couple of years. I don't have blatant rookies on here. Um, and Bulldog is one of those players. He's going to be excellent. Vikla, 18 years old, 82 games played, joining KT in 2022, replacing Aria. They went from a 43% win rate to a 58% win rate with Vikla as the full-time starter. Nuke, at 18, 82 games played, joined Schalke in 2021, replacing Abadage. And that team went from a 50% win rate down to 17% win rate. Took them a while to get back up onto the horse, if you will. Uh, BDS were not great when he was on their squad in the beginning. But now they are one of the more consistent teams in the LEC. Angel, while well, I went over him, Karis did not play many games. Only 18 games before HLE gave him a chance. And we could say... Maybe that's part of why Kairos has struggled. He hasn't gotten an opportunity to develop in um, an academy system. Really, hell, the majority of these players um, didn't. Uh, what do we have here? One, two, three, four, like what? Eight players had more than 50 games played. He joined HLE replacing Chovy. Quad replaced Chovy the year before. 
with only six games of experience and ended up with a 38% win rate as a result. DRX were a world's team in 2020. I mean, that's the thing. HLE as well, 2021 with Chovy were a world's team, but then these guys come in, they're inexperienced, and, I mean, the team falls apart. Scout. 18 years old in 2016, joined EDG. He had one game of experience um, in an academy system. I think he did have an LPL game prior to that, too. Um, might have even had some LCK games with T1. I'm not 100% sure. But either way, joined EDG and uh, would improve the team from a 71% win rate to an 88% win rate, replacing Pawn. Um, Pawn would also be replaced earlier in his career by UCAL who at 17 years old, well, actually has later on his career, because Scout did it in 2016. Uh, in 2018, Pond was replaced by UCAL, who at 17 years old would take the game from a team from a 67% win rate to a 70 um, on KT Rolster. Uh, the only NA player on here, Jojo Pune, uh, 17 years old, would play for EG, had 102 games of experience going into 2022. Uh, would take the win rate from 62 to 68, uh, replacing Jizuke. Cream, in 2021, at 17 years old, with 76 games of um, uh, development, would uh, join OMG and uh, improve their win rate from 28% to 51%, get them into playoffs. Wu Ming was the starter prior. And then we have an interesting cap case with Caps. So, 17 years old, Caps... Um, at least that's when I have it. I, I feel like that could be wrong. But regardless, um, with Fnatic, and mind you, when I include age on here, that's not necessarily their first game. I shouldn't have said debut, but their debut season. The major, you know, I tab tag them with this age. This is when, you know, their birthday and things of that nature. Um, there are some players that returning 19 mid-season that I didn't include on here because I figured out, well, the majority of that year, they were 19 years old, not 18. But Caps... 17 years old, playing for Fnatic, had 24 games of academy or, or regional experience and 12 games of TCL experience. And that's something to think about because Turkey at the time were a world's qualifying region. Were they uh, major region status? No, but those are um, significant games. Those are games with value. Um, would replace Fabaven and uh, get the team to a 62% win rate. Rookie at 17 years old, had 10 games of experience before getting the starting job for KT Rolster Arrows, um, and took the team from a 42% win rate with zero in 2013 to 61%. Chovy, 17 years old, with seven games of prior experience in 2018, would replace Rather as Griffin joined the LCK and had a 70% win rate. That Griffin roster, of course, uh, highly touted, one of the best rosters when it comes to prospects ever. Um, Zhao Hu, 17 years old, joining Game T at 20, in 2015. 39% uh, win rate. That was the original year for that club. Uh, another case that's special, Closer. Technically, so Zhao Hu, UCAL, Closer, Zeka, BDD, Faker. No games played prior to their major region experience. Closer. Technically, before turning 17 with Live Sandbox in 2022, 17, 18 years old, uh, he played 36 games with T1 over a couple splits and playoffs, but never was the bulk starter over Faker. And you could argue that situation was good or bad, right? Because he's re possibly replacing Faker at the time in some people's eyes. He's battling the greatest player of all time for playing time. And it's got to put a lot of pressure on him, and we see how crazy T1 fans are. So, you know, Closer's had a great career so far. I think he's pretty underrated. Uh, but in part, I feel like the community sentiment towards him has to do with that. And Kara is in a similar boat with Doombi. Doombi is not as good as Faker, of course, but he's a world champion. Um, so it is uh, a struggle. Um, joined Live Sandbox and had a 49% win rate in his debut. Uh, Zeka, 17 years old, in 2020 played for Vici Gaming. Replacing Jay took the team from a 29% win rate to a 43% win rate. Yes, Zeka did start his career in China. BDD, 17 years old, 2016, would play for CJ Entis. Replacing Coco, taking the team down a peg from 60% to 49% win rate. And then we have Faker, uh, 16 years old in 2013 with SKT. 
uh, you know, the rest of his career's history, 76% win rate. Um, in terms of world champions on here, we got one, two, three, four, nope, nope, three, five. We have five world champions. Um, so, you know, a lot of great players on the board. They had, you know, early starts to their career. It's kind of funny because I have all the mids on a, on a, on a, a spreadsheet. And we have, like, Frescowie and these LEC uh, mids that started are starting their career in, like, their mid-20s. And they're older than so many players that are on the board right here that have all this experience and all this notoriety. Um, I think, like, Frescowie has maybe, like, 360 or... Uh, Paratix mid has like 360 games of uh, development um, before getting an opportunity uh, like this one. So, no, you know what? No, Heretics mid does not because he played in Turkey. Eh, I think I specified he played in Turkey on my spreadsheet. Regardless, um, just an interesting thing to talk about. Um, you know, a lot of players, like I said in the beginning, don't get an opportunity to um, develop. And we see on the board here, there are quite a few players that got, like, no opportunity to develop at all, but ended up having good careers. I mean, Zhao Hu, three-time MSI champion. You could argue the best Chinese player of all time. Uh, Yu Cal has had a solid career for six seasons. Closer, um, I think, is a pretty damn good mid laner. Zeka, world champion. BDD, um, you know, a great player in his own right. Has had a stellar career. And Faker is the greatest of all time. So, um, Chovy. Possibly best player in the world right now. Rookie, world champion, Caps, pro the best Western player of all time. Um, some might cons I've argued with some people they think he's the third best mid ever. Um, Cream, I mean, we'll see how he goes and how he develops. But, I mean, his career is still just getting started. He's only 20, 21 years old. JoJo getting offers from the LCK this past offseason as a North American-born player, which is insane. Scout, world champion, quad, eh, well, that, that one probably um, not, not working. Karis, also situation, though, two players that didn't get an opportunity. And I shouldn't say that because, you know, I'm saying Cream deserves time. These players deserve time, too. It's just the fact that they didn't get any experience at all, really, and it's probably part of the reason. Angel, solid career. Nukes, finally getting it together. Vikla, still has some development to do. Bulldog is looking really good. Showmaker, world champion. Bethio, in my opinion, one of the best, if not the best, Western uh, mids in terms of the laning phase. Care, I mean, we'll put him in the same boat as we put Kareem and etc. And then Knight. Um, of course, Knight is in the argument for best player in the world as well, alongside Chovy. So, an interesting like list, a star-studded list. Thank you for watching. If you like the video, like it. Subscribe to the channel for daily League of Legends content. Follow me on Twitter. Join the Discord. Become a YouTube supporter. And hope to see you again tomorrow.